This probable cause spells out David Brinker's version of the events that led up to his wife's shooting death in the 6,000 block of Oak Avenue early on the morning of March 6th. Friends say Dorothy was distraught when she returned home the night of March 6th to find her six-month-old daughter and husband gone, adding that she'd received abusive text messages from him. The last text message she got from him, he was really angry. Because the baby he was, was calling her names. According to this PC, Brinker claims when he returned home later, his wife jumped in his truck trying to leave during an argument. He said she'd been drinking, so he grabbed his gun to possibly shoot out the tires in order to stop Dorothy from driving away. That's not the case because he was nowhere near the tires. You right. only pull a gun when you have the intention of her arming somebody. The PC explains there was surveillance video of Brinker hanging onto the side of the truck as Dorothy drove away. Then, quote, he reached inside to try to open the door from the inside. He said, quote, had the gun still in my hand and it popped. I didn't know that I had my finger on the trigger. Now Brinker faces a charge of reckless homicide, a level five felony. One to six years is yeah. all that you get for reckless homicide. And yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. One prosecutor's former general counsel says the state's evidence might show Brinker was only haphazard in handling his gun. They don't have uh, either words or actions from the defendant that would lead them to show a jury or a judge that they knowingly and intentionally tried to uh, commit the murder. Mario Masalamini, who is not connected to the case, says Brinker's $100,000 bond might be intended to hold him in place pending more serious charges. While they're collecting other evidence, while the detectives on the case and the law enforcement officers are compiling more evidence, they might uh, as we call it, upcharge and file that murder uh, case later down the road. David Brinker's initial hearing is set for 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. In the newsroom, Russ McQuaid, Fox 59 News.